I was listening to your court one day. There was a defendant that was claiming that was his rough upbringing that led him to where he was. Mm -hmm. And you said, you know what? You have no idea where I came from. Mm -hmm. And I made other choices, which we'll talk about choices later. I love it. <laughs> um, but can you t let us a little bit about your upbringing and what things were like for you? Sure. Um, so as I said, I grew up in Shreveport, Louisiana. I have an older brother and a younger brother. So I'm the middle child. But because I'm the only girl, my brothers still treat me, treat me like I'm the baby. <laughs> so my mom is like, to my younger brother one time, she's like, what are you talking about her curfew? She's older than you, you know, stop. So, and then whenever I would um, meet a guy, they all wanted to meet him. But my parents divorced when I was very young. So the people who raised me were my mom, my grandmother, and the male figures in my life were my two uncles. Um, one of my uncles, he served in Vietnam. He's since passed. So when I grew up, uh, my mom was all about your work ethic because I always tell this story. My mom um, had a bad marriage, so she gets divorced. She comes back to Shreveport because she was in Dallas. And she grew up in this small town called Grand Cane, Louisiana, and she got married straight out of high school. So when she comes back to my grandmother's house, she has children and she has to work. And she put in applications everywhere. She put in an application to work on the garbage truck. And I always tell people, there is no shame in working on a garbage truck. Somebody has to do it and they do great work. My mom actually personally knows the people who collect her trash and she considers everybody her children. So they're like her sons to her. And she put in an application for that. She put in an application for Libby Glass. And she was going to go start working on the garbage truck. And that was back in the day where, one, people didn't have trash bags. They were, I don't know if people remember this. You would have the tin cans, you'd line it with newspapers and put your trash in that. And then they would, somebody would get off the truck and dump it. So she was going to be riding on the back of a truck. What ends up happening is she gets called to work at Libby Glass. And so she gets to work at Libby Glass, but she's on rotating shifts. So every seven days, her shift changed and she would have three days off, but seven days morning and then three days off, then seven days, the afternoon shift, three days off, seven days graveyard shift. So the time that I would spend with her, the quality time was when she would be able to be home to give me my bath. So that's where our conversations would happen. I knew my mom loved me. I knew my mom wanted to be at every school event, but I knew she couldn't be at every school event. And so from that, my mom taught me, one, if you have children, your children need to come first because they can't support themselves. You got to make sure they're fed. You got to make sure they're clothed. And you still got to spend that emotional time with them. So in my childhood, my things that I learned, I learned from my mom and my grandmother. Believe it or not, in Shreveport, when I was growing up, you didn't have to attend kindergarten. So I didn't start school till first grade. And even though I started school at first grade, the school I started at was Central Free, Central Free Methodist. It was right across the street from my grandmother. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to school. I'm going to school. I'm anxious. My mom had me dressed so pretty going to school. I get to school and my mom is trying to uh, drop me off. And I am losing it. I'm having a full meltdown. First grader having a full melt meltdown and other children are like, Stephanie, it's going to be great. I'm like, no, it's not. Nobody told me I was getting left here. And so my mom finally calmed me down and she leaves. But the good thing about it, when I started first grade, I already knew how to read. I already knew how to tell time because my grandmother, and my mother would teach me certain things. I already knew how to answer phones, <laughs> you know, the basics of life. But the funny thing that happens I'm at school and my mom and my grandmother would tell this story to anybody who's who would listen. Lunch break comes and I'm thinking, OK, yay, I made it. It's done. So I leave the school, walk across the street and go back to my grandmother's house. And she's like, what are you doing here? I'm like, I'm here to watch all my children. We're done for the day. And she's <laughs> like, what? And so my grandmother said the teacher or the principal came down from the school because they knew where she lived, knocked on the door. And they wanted to spank me. And my grandmother said, you will not spank her. She doesn't know. This is her first year in school. And they're like, oh, that explains everything. We're good now. 
And so that was the best experience. And that was a private school. And then from there, I went to West Street, West Streetport Elementary School. That was a public school. So I sent, spent a year there. Then I went to West Streetport and that's where my, my older brother was, my cousins were. And my mom purposely wanted me at Center Creek Methodist across from my grandmother because she knew that I was gonna have a hard time. I didn't think I was gonna have a hard time. I was like excited about it. But when you get to the point that people are leaving and they're not staying there with you, not so exciting. But I came to really, really love school. And my teacher at Center Free Methodist, Miss Leslie, she said, you need to remember the name, all, name of all of your teachers. So I did. And then um, we were poor. We didn't know we were poor. Like now for Christmas, you see children getting 30 gifts. You would get one gift and you would be so excited. Like you got the bicycle, yay. And that will be your one gift. It wouldn't like, oh, we're opening dozens of presents. But I learned work ethic because I used to sell Christmas cards. And you know how you had the newspaper article and you would have a little ad and it would say, sign up, sell Christmas cards and you can get free stuff or you can get money. So I got my Christmas cards in the mail and I went door to door selling them. And then my brothers were like, this is great. You're making some money. Of course, you know, the money I was making like $5, but $5 was a lot. Yeah, it was. You could go to the mom and pop store around the corner and just clean up with $5. But I would do that and I, I would also rake yards and make money doing that. And it was great to have money to you go to the store and like, oh, I'm getting a pickle. It's five, it's it's 25 cents. So those were great days, but it was always work ethic and then it's a shame that some children will not have the upbringing that we had even though it was my mom my they were divorced um we would do things like you could walk and pick peaches walk and pick pears there was a guy who lived up the street from us and he would always say hey be sure let the children come pick the pears and, and everything and we would go you could walk pick pears and walk around, not worry that somebody was going to kidnap you. And we would just go play outside all day. And then we would have to be home before the lights came on. And it was funny because when the street lights came on and it was still light outside a little bit, we would be begging, please let us stay out. I mean, <laughs> drinking from the water hose, people don't do that anymore. I don't know if you can survive that now. But my childhood was really a lot of fun and there were up and down hills things that we had to go through but it was great childhood 